what models do we have about what happens on the inside of the black hole at that moment? So I guess that one of the intuitions, one of the big reminders that you're giving to us is like, hey, we know very little about what can happen on the inside of a black hole. And that's mm -hmm. why we have to be careful about making, it's better to think about the black hole as an event horizon. Mm -hmm. But what can we know? And what do we know about the physics of, of space-time inside the black hole? I don't mind being incautious about thinking about what the math tells us. So okay. I'm Great. not such a, a, a an observer, right? I'm very, theoretical in my work. It's really pen on paper a lot. Um, these are thought experiments that I think we we can perform and contemplate. Um, whether or not we'll ever know is another question. And um, so one of the most beautiful things that we suspect happens on the inside of a black hole is that space and time, in some sense, swap places. So while I'm on the outside of the black hole, let's say I'm in a nice, comfortable space station, this black hole's maybe 10 times the mass of the sun, 60 kilometers across. I could be 100 kilometers out. That's very, very close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Orbiting quite safely. No big deal. You know, hanging out. Uh, I, I don't bug the black hole. Black hole doesn't bug me. <laughs> it won't suck me up like a vacuum or anything crazy. But uh, some, my, my astronaut friend jumps in. Um, as they cross the event horizon, what I'm calling space, I'm looking on the outside at this spherical shadow of the black hole cast by maybe light around it. It's a shadow because everything gets too close, falls in. It's just this um, uh, just contrast against a bright sky. I think, oh, there's a center of a sphere. Mm -hmm. And in the center of the sphere is the singularity. It's a point in space from my perspective. But from the perspective of the astronaut who falls in, it's actually a point in time. So their notions of space and time have rotated so completely that what I'm calling a direction in space towards the center of the black hole, like the center of a physical sphere, they're going to tell me what well, they can't tell me, but they're going to come to the conclusion, oh, no, that's not a location in space. That's a location in time. In other words, the singularity ends up in their future, and they can no more avoid the singularity than they can avoid time coming their way. So there's no shenanigans you can do once you're inside the black hole to try to skirt it, <laughs> the singularity. You can't set yourself up in orbit around it. You can't try to fire rockets and stay away from it because it's in your future. And there's an inevitable moment when you will hit it. <laughs> Usually for a stellar mass black hole, we think it's microseconds. Microseconds to get from the event horizon to the... To the singularity. To the singularity. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so that's describing from the your astronaut friend's perspective. Yes, from their perspective, the singularities in their future. But from your perspective, what do you see when your friend falls into the black hole and you're chilling outside and watching? So one way to think about this um, is to is to think that as you're approaching the black hole, the astronaut's spacetime is rotating relative to your spacetime. So let's say right now, my left is your right. We're not shocked by the fact that there's this relativity in left and right. Mm -hmm. It's completely understood. And I can perform a spatial rotation to align my left with your left. Right now, I've completely rotated left mm -hmm. out, right? Um, if I just want to draw a, a, a kind of a compass diagram, not a compass diagram, but you know, at the top of maps, there's a north, south, east, west. But now time is up, down. And one direction of space is, let's say, east-west. As you approach the black hole, it's as though you're rotating in space-time, is mm -hmm. one way of thinking about it. So what is the effect of that? The effect of that is, as this astronaut gets closer and closer to the event horizon, part of their space is rotated into my time, and part of their time is rotated into my space. So in other words, their clocks seem to be less aligned with my time. And the overall effect is that their time seems to dilate. The spacing between ticks on the clock of their watch, let's say, um, on, the, on the face of their watch, uh, is, is elongated, dilated, relative to mine. And it seems to me that their watches are running slowly, even though they were made in the same factory as mine, they were both synchronized beautifully, and they're excellent Swiss watches. Um, 
it seems as though time is elapsing more slowly for my companion. And uh, likewise, for them, it seems like mine's going really fast. So years could elapse in my space station. My plants come and go. They die. I age faster. I've got gray hair. Mm -hmm. um, and they're falling in, and it's been minutes in their frame of reference. Um, flowers in their little rocket ship haven't rotted. They don't yeah. have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> their biological clocks have slowed down relative to ours. Eventually, at the event horizon, it's so extreme, it's so slow, it's as though their clocks have stopped altogether from my point of view. And that's to say that it's as though their time is completely rotated into my space. Hmm. And this is connected with the idea that inside the black hole, space and time have switched places. Um, so I might see them hover there for millennia. <laughs> Other astronauts could be born on my space station. Generations could be populated there watching this poor astronaut never fall in. So basically, the uh, time almost comes to a standstill, mm -hmm. but we still, they do fall in. Right. They do fall in eventually. Now, that's because they have some mass of their own. Yeah. So they're not a perfectly light particle. Mm -hmm. And so they deform the event horizon a little bit, you will actually see the event horizon bobble mm -hmm. and absorb the astronaut. So in some finite time, the astronaut will actually fall in. So it's, a, it's like this weird space-time bubble that we have around us. Mm -hmm. And then there's a very big space-time curvature bubble thing from the black hole, and they, there's a nice swirly type yeah. situation going on. Yeah. That's how you get sucked up. Yeah. So if you're a perfect, like, uh, infinitely small particle, you would just be- It'd take longer and longer. And probably just be stuck there or something, but no, there's quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. Eventually you'll fall in. There, any perturbation will only go one way. It's unstable yeah. in one direction, in one, in one direction. direction only. Um, but it's, it's really important to remember that from the point of view of the astronaut, not much time has passed at all. You just sail right across as far as you're concerned and- Nothing dramatic happens there. You might not even realize you've come to the event horizon. You you might not even realize you've crossed the event horizon because it's there's nothing there, <laughs> right? This is an empty region of space-time. There's no marker to tell you you've reached this very dangerous point of no return. You can fire your rockets like hell when you're on the outside and maybe even escape, right? But once you get to that point, there's no amount of energy. that you, All the energy in the universe will not save you from uh, this demise. 